Hey, what's up, guys? Today we're starting a new video series. We're gonna be taking apart and overhauling the engine on my Alice Chalmers C because we had some, shall we say, incidences with it right before we put it away for the winter last fall. And even though the shop's not completely done yet, I do use this tractor a lot and I'd like to try and get the engine put back together by the time we need it this spring. So, let's get going. Alright guys, well first we're going to start by taking the hood and the snow off. Just a couple of bolts at front and then as we'll see in a second here we get to the band at the back around the gas tank. Uh, as well as the lights, the bolts for those do go through the sheet metal of the hood. And then here we're just undoing the screw for the band clamp on the gas tank and the rear of the hood. And then we just pop the air cleaner off and we're good to go. Next I'm just going to cut the wire for the lights here and set those someplace out of the way. Those were uh, added afterwards. And then we disconnect the fuel line on the gas tank as well as the rear screw. And this screw was definitely uh, not the original and I had to uh, put a vice grip on the threads to get it off. But with that being done, the tank comes off. Next we're working on the muffler and uh, you remove this three-quarter screw first which puts some pressure on it and then wiggle it and it comes off. Next we're doing the valve cover and I am going in kind of a strange order here just because I want to get in and see what the, what the cylinders actually look like on this thing because like I said it did kind of fall apart. And as you can see here under the valve cover it's pretty gunky dirty but there was fresh oil in it. Next I'm going to pull the two bolts and two nuts to remove all of the rocker arms. And as I'll show later this rear stud has the channel passage in it for the oil to go from the uh, oil inlet on the head up into the uh, rocker arms. And then just lift it off. Alright, next we're working on the intake and exhaust manifold. And what I did here was I took the exhaust manifold and the carburetor off as an assembly. There's six bolts on this. One at the front, one at the back, and four in the middle right around the intake side. And the front bolt is also the top mount for the generator. Air cleaner has two bolts on it. Undo those and slide it right off. Then we remove the rods for the throttle and the choke. Uh, one had a cotter pin, one had a screw. Next we're going to pull all these wires off the generator. Making careful note of where they actually go to so we get them put back on right. And then in the same wiring harness is the wire that goes to the magneto. After that we're going to remove this oil line from the T that also goes into the head. And on the front here it goes into the front cover uh, through a standpipe which is also the pivot point for the throttle. And this standpipe was loose and leaking a lot of oil. 
Next we'll pull the spark plug wires off. And then the front cover for the radiator. It does take a little bit of wiggling to get it past the steering shaft, but it will come off. Just like that. Next I'm going to take off one of the front tires. And this is just to make room for a bucket to drain the coolant in. Just like that. And here you can see the bucket that I'm draining the coolant in from the peccock on the lower radiator hose. And while that coolant slowly drains out of there, I'm going to take the thermostat housing off. There's two bolts and a hose clamp that have to come off. And this assembly also was a little bit gunky on the inside. And off it comes. That bottom gasket wasn't in great shape. Next, I'm going to pull the spark plugs out. And removing the small feeder line from the back side of the T for the oil. Next, I'm taking the push rods out. I'm putting them in my little holder there just to keep them numbered so that they can go back in the spot they came from. And right here I'm just uh, putting two nuts on the studs so that I can pull the valve cover studs off and get those out of the way. Just so they don't get accidentally dinged from moving the head around. And that's the oil passage I mentioned earlier. And out comes the second one. Next I'm using my breaker bar here just to loosen all the head bolts. And I like to use my breaker bar in case the screw is binding I can feel that instead of just uh, completely galling the threads up with my impact. Uh, like on this last one here, something didn't feel quite right, so I kept twisting it by hand. And I pull out my little impact and undo them the rest of the way. Uh, except for these ones here. I uh, need a little bit more persuasion. Not binding down, just uh, still in the threads pretty good. And we'll just get those out of the way so we can pull the head off. Just like that. Okay, so taking a look at things, uh, there was some coolant in cylinder number two. Not a lot, just a tiny little bit, as well as a few tiny dabs of coolant on the head gasket surface. And uh, when the light moves here, you can see that there was some rust on the, the valves on uh, cylinders 2 and 4. So a little bit of moisture getting in there probably. But with that being said, I'm running out of light here. So that's where we're going to leave it for today for part 1. Uh, stay tuned for part 2. We'll take down the bottom end and see what more problems we can find with this engine.